Okay, welcome to physics problem solving videos again. So this time we're going to do an example of something called a pursuit problem. So this is a very common type of problem that you see when you're studying uh, acceleration. And this involves two objects. Uh, one of which in this case is accelerating, although the problem could have just as easily been solved if both objects were accelerating. So this is the problem we're going to look at. Now it is well known that I love Yugos, so this problem involves a Yugo. By some miracle, I get my Yugo up to a speed of 35.7 meters per second. Unfortunately, I do this in front of one of Illinois' finest, and clearly, since a Yugo is a speeding hazard, uh, she starts to chase me at the moment that I pass her. So the officer accelerates from rest with an acceleration of 6.50 meters per second per second. And what we want to know is, how long does it take the officer to overtake me and my amazing Yugo? And the second thing we're asked to uh, find is how far does she chase me before she actually catches me. Okay? So, as with all problems, the right thing to do is to draw some pictures to start with. And uh, in addition to that, we'll write out all of the values in our kinematic table before we actually start the problem solving process. Now, in this case, there's two pictures that I like to draw. One is the physical picture that just kind of shows the physical objects and what they're doing. And the second thing is a graph, because I think the graph also illuminates what it is that you need to do with each of your equations. Okay, so uh, with uh, all pictures, the very first physical thing that we do when we draw a physical picture is we draw the coordinates. So I'm going to choose my positive x direction to the right. The officer passes me, uh, or I pass the officer, at x is equal to zero. I am initially traveling in my amazing Yugo here with some constant speed in the positive x direction. The officer, she sees me. We'll put a little light on top of her car so we know it's her. Okay, so she started at x equal to zero, and she also starts pursuing me in the positive x direction with a certain acceleration, which we're told in the problem. Now let's draw a graph of what this motion looks like before we actually write out our kinematic tables. So the whole point in graphs is to kind of illuminate for you what the physical properties of the problem are. And in this case, I want to draw a position versus time graph, okay? And the reason I'm choosing that graph is because we're actually asked uh, to find the positions, okay? So this is position versus time. And since I am traveling with constant speed in the positive direction, my line on this graph that represents my position as a function of time is a line with constant slope with constant positive slope because I'm moving in the positive direction. So I'm going to draw my line as a straight line with constant positive slope. I was at the origin at x equal to zero at the start of the problem. I was traveling in the positive direction before that, and I continued traveling along after that. Now the officer she sees me and she starts at rest, but she's accelerating. So her speed is increasing throughout the problem. That means the slope of the line that represents her motion initially has almost zero slope. Well, in fact, exactly zero slope at the origin, but it gets steeper and steeper and steeper as she accelerates. So her motion looks like this, and that's greatly exaggerated because it's almost vertical at this point. And so what the problem asks me to find is it asks me to find what is the position at the moment that she overtakes me. Well, she overtakes me at that point. At that point, we both have the same position. And at that point, 
the same time has elapsed in uh, the problem for both of us. And that will be important when we set up our kinematic table and our kinematic equations. That's why I like to draw the graph first of all, because it makes it very obvious that both the final position and the final time are the same for both of us. Okay, so let's write out our kinematic table. There are six kinematic variables. There is the final position, the initial position, the final speed, the initial speed, the acceleration, and the time. And because we have two objects in this problem, as we do in all pursuit problems, I'm going to make two columns, one for me and one for the officer. So this is me and this is the police officer. Okay. Now what we learned from our graph over here is that the final position is the same for both of us and it's unknown. In fact, that's one of the things that we're asked to find. So I put a question mark for the x in both of the columns and I put my equal sign here to remind me in the kinematic table that those are the same for both of us. Similarly, our graph over here told us that the time which we're asked to find is the same for both of us. So again, I'll put the equal sign here. Okay, now we parse the problem and we put in all the other information that we were told. Okay, I'm traveling with a constant speed. That means my initial speed and my final speed are identical and I'm told that that is the amazing speed for a Yugo of 35.7 meters per second and my final time is the same because I'm moving at constant speed. What does constant speed mean? Constant speed means I'm not accelerating. I'm not speeding up, I'm not slowing down, so the value of my acceleration is zero meters per second per second. Okay, And my initial position is x equal to zero meters. Okay, so I'm all done. Now let's do the officer. Okay, she also starts at x equal to zero. So we'll put zero meters for her. Her initial speed is zero meters per second. She was sitting still at the moment that I passed her. We don't know what her final speed is. We're not told, although we could figure it out from the kinematic equations. But we are told what her acceleration is. And her acceleration is 6.5 meters per second per second. Okay? Now, this is an example of where we have to come up with a way to get at the information that we're interested in. And so we write out the kinematic equations. I'm going to just write them down once, but the re thing we have to remember is that we could actually write them down twice, once for me with my variables and once for the officer with her variables. So the kinematic equations are x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus a half a t squared v is equal to v naught plus a t and v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, so those are my kinematic equations. Now I have two unknowns. The final position is unknown and the time is unknown. And as is always the case, I'm going to have to figure out one of them uh, usually by solving simultaneous equations. So in this case, we're actually talking about position. So let's see if we can figure out the position from these problems. Now, in previous examples, we've often used this equation down here, the v squared equation. Now, for me, this is not a useful equation because v and v naught are the same and a is zero. So that's a trivial equation for me. Can I use it for the officer? Well, let's see. Do I know her final speed? Nope, that's a question mark in my kinematic table. Do I know her initial speed? I do. I know 2. I know A. Do I know her final position? No, I don't. So this equation is not going to be useful for me uh, the way it has been in the past.
So I'm going to go back to the position equation and I'm going to write it down once for me and once for the officer and I'll have two equations with two unknowns. Now the x's are the same for both me and her so for me I'm going to write x my initial position is 0 so I'm going to leave that out my speed v naught t t is the same for both of us so I'm going to just leave it as t and my acceleration is 0 so I'm done that's a really straightforward equation for me. That's great. Now, let's write down for the police officer. Again, we're just going to call the file position is x because it's the same for both of us. I'm going to leave x0 equal to 0 because her initial position is 0, just like it was for me. Her initial speed is 0. She was at rest at the start of the problem. So I'm going to leave that term off. So the only term that survives for her is a half a p, that's her acceleration, times t squared. Okay. Now this is a um, uh, uh, set of equations and there are many ways to solve a simultaneous set of equations. In this case, I'm simply going to substitute this equation for x in for that x right there. I'm going to basically say that x me is equal to x of the police officer. That's the statement in our graph up here. They both arrive at the same place. So for me, v naught t was my expression for the final x. And for the police officer, one half AP T squared was the value. Now the reason I did that should become apparent here. This is going to prevent me from having to solve a quadratic equation because there's a T here, which I'm going to cancel with one power of T over there. And so now I can do a little bit of algebra and solve for the time which is one of the things that I'm asked to find. So this equation is now v naught is a half apt. So t is equal to 2 v naught over the police officer's acceleration. So that is the time it takes for her to actually catch me. I can substitute in numbers. So this is 2. This v naught is my initial speed. So that's 35.7 meters per second. This a is her acceleration. That's 6.5 meters per second per second. And if I punch those numbers in, I find that she catches me after 11 seconds. Okay, so that's the first bit. How much time does it take her to catch me? And the second bit is how far does it take for her to catch me? Well, I have two equations for x right here. One is v naught times t. Now that I know t, I can use that. And the other is a half ap times t squared. And again, since I know t, I can solve that. I'm going to use the simple one here. You should try the second one and demonstrate that it gives you exactly the same answer as what I'm about to compute. So this is x is equal to my initial speed times the time that I just found right there. So that is 35.7 meters per second times 11.0 seconds, and if I punch that into my calculator, I find that she will catch me after 393 meters. Okay, so that is an example of a pursuit problem. Okay, so give it a whirl, double check everything to make sure I did it right, and let me know if you have any trouble. I'll see you here next time.